This is me in 2022. Intelligent. She is more intelligent than him. She is more intelligent than he. Surely, more intelligent than he is is better than she is more intelligent than him. I couldn't believe you said she is more intelligent than him. At 9.15, she is more intelligent than he. Wouldn't you say she is more intelligent than he instead of him? Yes, because you don't say him is intelligent. Subjects, not object. Hello and welcome to Eleven Talk. Let's do this as a game. Can you get my grammar question correct? Now, has this ever happened to you? You're writing an email and you want to tell the reader that you and somebody called Jane, yes, let's call her Jane, will be arriving at 6 p.m. Do you say, A, Jane and I will be arriving at 6 p.m. Or B, me and Jane will be arriving at 6 p.m. I know that many of you will instinctively say that it's A, because Jane and I are the subjects of the sentence, so you must use a subject pronoun. And you may add that if you remove Jane from answer B, you get me will be arriving at 6 p.m., which makes no sense. But if you remove Jane from sentence A, you get I will be arriving at 6 p.m., which is correct. Case closed. End of story, right? And when you see somebody writing sentence B, you feel anger and outrage. But OK, OK, let's put it another way. This is your choice and you absolutely must choose A or B. There is no C. So A, I and Jane will be arriving at 6 p.m. Or B, me and Jane will be arriving at 6 p.m. Hmm. Now, according to the grammar logic, that very same logic, A should still be correct. We're still using the subject pronouns, but it sounds wrong somehow. Yes, A is totally wrong. It sounds weird. At least B sounds normal, even though it may be technically correct. Yes, I'll be using these air quotes uh, a lot, by the way. Most of you are going to choose B, aren't you? But what's wrong with A? Is the rule that I must follow the other name or pronoun? What if we swap round B? Jane and me will be arriving at 6 p.m. It still sounds kind of okay. I'm not finished yet. It gets stranger and I've got more questions for you, so do pay attention. What about this? What's the answer? A. Mum, who's there? You. It's Jane and I. B. Mum, who's there? You. It's me and Jane. Some of you will still be saying, it's B, of course, Gideon. I've already told you that you must use the subject pronouns. Are you stupid or something? Why don't you listen? Okay, okay, fair enough. But now let's remove Jane from the scene. Mum, who's there? You. It is I. Mum, who's there? You. It's me. Now, unless you're an 18th century dandy who looks something like this or a heroine from a Jane Austen novel, almost everybody in the 20th century would say that B is correct. Even the most fervent of grammar sticklers would answer B. Now, how is this possible? The grammar says that the verb to be is a copular verb or a linking verb and connects a verb to a subject, which means that these should be followed by a subject pronoun. So, for example, we say, he's not wrong, is he? Never is him. We say, I'm not French, am I? And not and me. Mm, must be subject pronoun, but the object pronoun correct, isn't it? Isn't it? But you know, a lot of these grammar rules, there you are, I've used those air quotes again, are written by people with too much time on their hands, or they get paid per rule, perhaps, and they end up creating these fake rules. Other fake rules include 
you must remember to never split an infinitive. I made a video about that 100% fake split infinitive rule. Check it out here. A preposition is not the kind of word you should end a sentence with. Another fake rule. And returning to our beloved pronouns, this is mostly a fake rule. In some instances, and this is a good example of it, the correct grammar, or rather the more appropriate grammar, is a question of context. In linguistics, they talk about registers. Register refers to the different styles of language used in specific situations or settings. So in a formal register, you might prefer Jane and I shall be attending the meeting. In a casual register, the correct grammar, there you are, the air quotes again, is different. Me and Jane will be coming to the party. Noticed I snuck in the word shall or will into the examples, which is another example of grammar that depends on register. And we talk more about registers in this video here. Do check it out. Now, if you said to your bros in the hood, Jane and I shall be attending the party, they'd think that you had a stick stuck up your ass and revoke your invitation. To sum up, you might wish to use Jane and I in a formal setting, and that is perfectly fine, but don't feel obliged to. Me and Jane is perfectly correct. Next question, and bearing in mind what we said about registers, which is correct? It was he, not I, who threw stones at the police. B. It was him, not me, who threw stones at the police. So both sentences are correct, but doesn't B, the so-called incorrect one, sound more natural? So the correct answer is the incorrect answer. That's weird, isn't it? Of course, if you go back to writing prior to the 20th century, particularly the 19th century, this respect for the subject pronoun versus the object pronoun is more fixed. And this is Robert Louis Stevenson writing in 1891. Upon his shame, with this thought, she drew back into the house. Heaven, she thought, how careless have I been, how weak, it is he, not I, that stands in this eternal peril. It was he, not I, that took the curse upon his soul. But in the 21st century, you will adapt what you say according to the register you are speaking in. When you say me and him, or us, or them, as subjects, that's fine. Don't be influenced by fake rules. These kind of corrections of fake grammar rules cause anxiety and panic. Some people get so spooked when someone tells them, no, 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 you have to say it is I, not it is me. And as a result, they end up trying too hard to be correct and use I too often in their speech. And this is called hypercorrection. So the next question is, which is correct? A. Oi. Keep it as a secret between you and I. Or B. Oi. Keep it as a secret between you and me. B is correct. When we use the preposition between, it should be followed by an object pronoun. That's what most usage guides say. So just keep this between you and I. I know there is a world of difference between you and I and a barbecue. Quit. Now, just between you and I, you've mentioned that term a lot today. And I don't... Say. By the way, some writers say that between you and I is also correct because so many people have hypercorrected that it's become part of the language. But that's a minority opinion. But what certainly is true is that it's never a question of a register. The most famous grammar mistake of Shakespeare is 
his use of between you and I, which occurs in The Merchant of Venice, in which Antonio informs Bassanio in a letter that all debts are cleared between you and I. Did the bard make a grammatical mistake? Some say yes, some say no. I think that grammar back then was more fluid. Things were written at a time before prescriptive grammar books. But the important thing to remember is that if you're learning English or any other foreign language, don't worry about grammar mistakes. Even great writers will make mistakes. We all make mistakes. The important thing is to keep on speaking. Hope you enjoyed that video and do you agree with me? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time.